Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks to, for coming to my talk. Um, so this presentation, Preston Spark, a unified SQL experience, is a joint collaboration between um, Ariel Weisberg of Meta and me. So Ariel could not join us today, and I'm going to cover his part as well. So this presentation is going to be divided into two parts. The first half of the presentation is going to cover the motivation behind building Preston Spa, the library itself, and then um, we'll get, uh, uh, and then we'll talk about the implementation at Intuit. Um, so why Presto on Spark? Um, so let's do a quick poll. Um, how many of you have run into the situation um, where uh, you are thinking or you, you are not sure where to use, say, Presto or Spark SQL uh, for your query? Have you guys run into the situations? I see a few hands. So um, Presto and Spark SQL, as you all know, are the most popular dialect used in the industry for query processing. But each of the dialects has its trade-off. Um, customers doesn't necessarily understand when to use which dialect. Um, they don't necessarily understand you know, what are the um, memory or the compute needs of the query. Um, they would not necessarily know um, what is the internal architecture of, the, uh, of these engines and what are the optimizations that goes with these queries. So this is a quote from a Presto user. Um, users tend to like uh, Presto in general, um, especially if they are uh, coming from uh, writing queries um, in an analytical database, say Vertica. It's easier to write fast uh, test. Whereas with Spark, if you are using open source Spark, um, open source Spark does not have an exploration environment. So testing your queries, um, debugging it and authoring it uh, adds a little overhead and takes time. Whereas with Presto, um, it's fast to test and it's easy. But with Presto, um, you may run into, often run into out of memory errors. And as a workaround, I have seen um, users uh, splitting their queries, uh, trying to make it work, break their queries, they apply uh, Presto session properties, or they will do opti many optimizations. And when um, these optimizations do not work, that's when um, they switch to Spark. Um, so this image uh, depicts um, uh, users or customers' emotions. Um, this is exactly the sentiments that we see at Intuit as well. Um, so users does not necessarily know, you know, when should I use Presto? Should I use Spark for this query? I see an out of memory error again. Oh no, I have to work around the limits. And these are the questions also that we get in our support channel. So the next couple of slides are going to cover about the strength and the weaknesses of each of its dialects. So as you all know, um, Presto is uh, ANSI SQL. It's widely adopted. It was um, built at Facebook. Facebook in in extensively uses Presto. Uber uses Presto. And it is also used add into it for interactive analysis. It's fast, um, a most popular interactive uh, analysis tool. Um, it provides um, federated query design. So federated query design means that um, you can connect to heterogeneous data sources, um, such as uh, MySQL, Cassandra, and Hive. Um, you do not need to preload the data in memory. Um, you can just uh, get the data from various sources in, in the same query. And as you all know, that um, users uh, use Presto for interactive uh, workloads. They naturally tend to use the same query uh, for the batch workloads. And um, over a period of time, um, your data sets tend to naturally grow. And that's where the weakness of Presto comes uh, with respect to the scale limitations. Um, so because data sets are growing naturally over a period of time, um, you can easily um, run into out of memory errors because Presto tries to do everything in memory. And uh, long running queries are at risk of failures because uh, Presto is not fault tolerant. Now, let's look at uh, Spark strengths. So um, Spark is the tool of choice um, for uh, batch queries. Spark has been designed uh, keeping scalability in mind. It can practically offer unlimited scale. 
Um, it can scale up to many big clusters. Uh, on the other hand, um, uh, with respect to weakness, um, if you are using open source Spark, you do not has, it does not have an exploration environment. Databricks has come up with SQLA, which offers an exploration environment, but if you use open source Spark, um, you have this uh, latency overhead. So um, the next few slides are going to talk about, um, I'm going to talk about the motivation behind uh, uh, building Presto and Spark uh, library. So we will talk about the Presto architecture and I'll try to explain uh, why it does not work uh, for batch workloads. Uh, so let's revisit our Presto architecture. As you all know, uh, Presto is designed for interactivity. It is low latency. There is no startup or delay time. It follows a classic um, MPP architecture. Uh, the JVM is always warm and um, ready uh, to execute queries. Um, we have long-lived JVMs running. It offers a multi-tenant service. A multi-tenant service means that you can have uh, multiple queries uh, which share the same JVM. And uh, <clears throat> it, uh, it uh, uses in-memory streaming shuffle. Um, so what does in-memory streaming shuffle mean? So that means that your mappers, um, they write their shuffle data to an in-memory buffer, and then they wait for reducers um, to consume that data. So that means that in Presto, your intermediate shuffle data is not persisted to this, but it is continuously streamed from your mapper uh, to reducers. So this makes Presto shuffle very fast. Another key point to note with respect to uh, Presto architecture is uh, it does not enumerate all the splits on the Presto driver or coordinator. It enumerates a small number of splits and assigns it to task lazily so that Presto query execution can start immediately uh, without waiting for the driver to enumerate all the splits. So all of these features of Presto uh, makes it uh, very fast and low latency. But then you come into the scalability limitations. Um, so I'll try to explain those uh, with a query. Um, so this query uh, goes over TPCH, order stable, and uh, is doing a group by on the customer key. So as I mentioned that uh, Presto um, does in memory streaming shuffle, that means it has to move all the data continuously from the mappers um, to the reducers. And if it is not moving the data continuously, what could happen? So because it is, all the data is stored in in-memory buffer, your in-memory buffer on the mapper side can get full and stall the execution. And on the reducer side, your in-memory buffer will be underutilized and cause um, unnecessary operational overhead. So that means that everything in Presto is executing concurrently. And uh, so say in this case, you're doing an aggregation um, on total price, so it has to load all the data uh, for that customer key into memory. So it causes inflexible scheduling. Uh, Presto does not offer fault tolerant. If, any, if there is any task failure in the later stage, your query fails. And um, you can easily um, exceed memory limit. Also, as I mentioned, that um, it is sharing, all the queries are sharing the same JVM. You could have one bad query negatively impact other queries or um, negatively impacting the cluster. So let's look at uh, Presto Unlimited. So Presto Unlimited was uh, again developed at Facebook to solve the shuffle problem. So Presto Unlimited brings this uh, map reduce style shuffle on Presto side. So now instead of your uh, shuffle data being streamed from your mapper to the reducers, um, it is persisted, uh, the intermediate data is persisted on disk. So now since your intermediate data is persisted on disk, um, say for this query when you are doing a, um, uh, an aggregation on customer key, it does not have to load all the data into memory, but it can load data for a few partitions into memory and it can thus reduce the peak memory usage. And also because um, your intermediate data is persisted, if there are task failures somewhere later in the stage, um, since your data is persisted, you can always retry. So this brings more reliability in execution of queries, um, and um, you can scale uh, large memory queries, and Presto Unlimited can run on existing Presto deployments. 
But then there are limitations. It still does not offer any resource execution, so you can still run, to the, run into this issue that you can have a bad query, um, which can um, negatively impact your uh, uh, other queries in the in, in your cluster, or it can negatively impact cluster. Um, you, it's still the fault tolerant is not full uh, foolproof, and it is hard to add or reduce workers uh, for a given query or on the cluster. So that's, that's when um, Presto and Spark comes. Um, so I'm going to touch base upon Spark architecture uh, before, going, uh, before talking about uh, Presto and Spark. Uh, so let's revisit Spark architecture. Uh, as I've mentioned, like Spark has been designed uh, keeping scalability in, my, in mind. It can practically offer unlimited scale. You can um, reliably execute uh, your query on petabytes of data. It can scale up to thousands of executors. Um, you get isolated executors for each query, so you don't have one query intervening with other queries or um, negatively impacting the cluster. Um, you can always retry a stage or a task. Um, you get flexible resource allocation, so if you are using Spark's dynamic allocation, you can dynamically allocate uh, resources for a query. You can scale up and down your cluster. If you are um, using Databricks auto scaling, it is more intelligent, and you can do the auto scaling it um, on um, other metrics, uh, on some metrics such as you know your active task or pending task, and it has more intelligent algorithm. And if you are running your workloads on cloud, um, you leverage the elasticity of cloud, and you can also optimize on cost and performance. So if Spark offers all these capabilities, why not simply use Spark or why um, should I not translate my query to Spark, right? The query translation thing obviously comes into mind. Uh, uh, so um, writing a query translation library is um, not easy. Um, it is tedious. And um, even if you have a very solid query translation library, uh, so um, LinkedIn has developed Codal, uh, which is an open source library uh, built on top of Apache Cal site, uh, which offers conversion from Hive to Presto. Uh, but not from Presto to Hive, but still you can have, a, you can always build a solid query translation library. But there are the subtle differences that you need to take care of. So for example, um, Presto in cast of 1.8 returns 2, whereas Spark returns 1. And both Spark and uh, Presto SQL are ANSI SQL, um, but the ANSI SQL spec says that um, it is left up to the vendor when to return null, or uh, when to throw um, an exception. So building a unified um, SQL experience, it's, in general, is not just about um, the same dialect, but the experience should also be the same. And then um, you also have um, you know, the user-defined functions, or so UDFs. You have to then uh, manually port your user-defined functions from one engine to the another. So there are additional features of Presto uh, which makes it um, powerful, right? Which you want to use, like the query federation capabilities which allows you to connect to multiple uh, heterogeneous data sources. Uh, Presto offers a powerful uh, geospatial toolkit. Uh, um, so uh, the Presto geospatial function supports a well-known text and well-known binary format of spatial objects. Um, you have a project area which offers a smarter table scans. So say if you are reading a map structure into memory, um, you don't need to, uh, it provides uh, subfill pruning, so you don't need to read all the keys, but you can just read the specified keys. It also provides efficient row skipping and adaptive filter ordering, um, so you can, gain, uh, you can immediately uh, get performance gains. So all these features of Presto makes it very powerful. So now comes the Presto on Spark. So uh, Presto on Spark is a full Presto uh, library which is running on Spark. It's not a query translation. Um, you get 100% SQL compatibility out of the box. It's transparent to users. Um, it's, as I mentioned, it's running as a library. You don't need a Presto cluster. It's running as a Spark application. Queries passed as a parameter and it's implemented on RDDs. Um, so Presto on Spark, it produces two artifacts. Uh, one is the launcher, and the other one is the uh, Presto Spark package, which contains all the dependencies. Uh, 
One important thing to note is the Spark task CPUs. Um, I will um, that this uh, prop, uh, configuration means that you are allocating all your cores uh, to a. It, it, it indicates how many cores you are allocating to a task. Uh, so keep track of this, and it's an important config, and we'll revisit it later. And then um, these are all the config catalogs, or these are all the Presto properties. Config points to your Presto session files, and catalog contains your Hive connector uh, properties. So let's look at uh, Presto architecture, um, Presto and Spark architecture. Um, so you have this Presto SQL, which is an input to a Spark submit. Um, and uh, within the Spark driver, it is the Presto query planner and the optimizer which is being uh, um, executed. Um, uh, uh, so within a Spark driver, um, uh, we will enumerate all the spreads. Uh, get uh, get the Presto logical plan, convert it into a Presto distributed plan, and then finally convert it into a Spark RTD to be uh, distributed across the cluster. So Presto also uh, serializes the plan, and that egg plan is uh, uh, sent to the Spark um, executors. And it communicates uh, to the Metastore via Thrift server. So within um, Spark Worker, um, it's again the Presto evaluation library which is being executed. Um, so say um, if you have, um, say if it's a scan task, um, your input is going to be splits and um, your output is going to be um, the shuffle rows or the serialized rows. So as I had before mentioned, I, that um, you are actually uh, sending the Presto logical plan um, to the Spark workers, you basically deserialize the plan and then convert it into a Presto executable operators. So for a scan stage, as I mentioned, it is splits, and your output is the shuffle rows. Um, and say if it is um, final stage, as the writer stage, your, in, your input is going to be the shuffle rows uh, from the upstream stage, and your output is going to be, um, say, write to table, uh, but before doing that, you can do a join or an aggregation, and it will be the Presto. A code base of the Presto evaluation library, uh, which will be executed. So as you observe that it does not use any of the Spark capabilities, it does not use Spark Planner or Spark Optimizer, it uses, uh, it operates at RDD level. Um, it does not use any of the Spark APIs to communicate with S3 or Hadoop or any of the other data sources, but it's all the Presto evaluation library which is executed on the driver and within the Spark task but it is leveraging Spark for the shuffle capabilities. So if you are using um, open source Spark, or if you are using um, Databricks, um, external shuffle service is enabled by default. But, um, so Facebook uses Costco as the shuffle service, but um, you can always plug in your own shuffle service. It also leverages Spark for query execution. So now you see that all the queries are executing on isolated executors. So you will no longer have this problem of you know um, one bad query intervening with other queries. And um, it also leverages uh, Spark's uh, cluster manager or Spark's elastic compute for um, better resource management. So now, um, if you're running your roles using Presto on Spark, you can practically uh, throw more compute for queries uh, that are complex, and um, those queries will perform well. And you can um, reduce uh, the compute for small queries. And thus, if you're running on cloud, you can optimize on performance. So let's look at the uh, query, uh, Presto uh, query plan. So the Presto query plan, as I mentioned, it runs on the driver. This is a simple query, um, which is doing join on two table. Um, and um, what you see on the left is the logical plan. What you see on the right is the Presto uh, distributed plan. And uh, the fragment here represents the Presto uh, stage um, execution. And here you are doing a redistribution on the order key. So let's look at uh, uh, the Spark uh, DAG. So this is what you're going to see on the Spark UI. Um, the state zero and one, it corresponds to uh, the scan inputs. The stage two um, is the um, shuffle, you're doing the shuffle and join here. Um, so important thing to note is uh, Presto uses uh, custom RDDs. 
So it uses Presto Spark Toss RDD, which extends our Presto, um, uh, which extends Zip RDD. Zip RDD means you can arbitrarily join n number of RDDs. Um, and Presto Tax RDD uh, represents a stage of execution in Presto on Spark, and um, it contains uh, this Presto Tax Source RDD, which I mentioned corresponds to um, uh, uh, corresponds to your scan inputs and Shuffle RDD. And within each of the RDDs compute methods, it's again the Presto um, evaluation library or Presto code base which is being executed. So this slide has the link uh, to uh, the Presto and Spark design docs. If you are interested in details, you can uh, look into that. So threading model. So as I had mentioned that Spark task CPU um, uh, config in the previous slide, so that's very important. So in Spark, by default, you allocate a uh, one core for every task, but Presto allocates all the cores for running one task. Um, so you'll always see one task on an executor. But within each task, uh, Presto does another uh, local in-memory shuffle, and um, for each of its subpartition, it assigns a thread, and that thread um, runs in parallel, and um, that thread pool is internally managed by Presto on Spark. There are a couple of advantages that you get out of this. So the first um, advantage is because you have one task output per executor, you reduce the overall uh, load on the shuffle service. And it also kind of way solves problem with, um, um, uh, it kind of solves pro the small IO problem, uh, the IO problem with small shuffle files, because now for each um, executor, you will have one big shuffle file as an output rather than small files. And it also solves the overhead with uh, memory overhead with broadcast joints. Because you have one task running on each executor, that means you will have one copy of uh, data on each node. So it saves you on memory. So to summarize, um, uh, what we have learned is that with Presto on Spark, you can, with using, using Spark, you can basically work all the queries which were not failing on, which were failing on Presto on Classic today can scale using Presto on Spark. And um, I would like to say it as, it's pressed to working on Spark, but it is transparent to customers, and you get a unified SQL experience. So on the exploration side, you use Presto SQL Dialect, you get the low latency from the Presto evaluation um, engine, and on the, and on the batch side, um, you uh, scale it using Spark. So what's coming next? Um, so uh, when you're using Presto on Spark, you will have to manually uh, tune the parameters like uh, the SQL shuffle partitions, which is called as query hash partition count in Presto, and uh, the Spark dynamic uh, allocation max executor. So um, with the features coming in, you don't need to do that. Um, it offers Velox integration. Velox is the uh, Presto team is rewriting their core engine in C++, so you'll get better performance uh, when you move to Velox. Um, your, the Spark's adaptive execution capabilities are also being implemented in Presto. You can coalesce small files and um, upgrade to Spark 3. And uh, so Presto on Spark currently uses, uses uh, Spark 2, um, but there's a plan in, uh, to migrate to Spark 3. So one important thing to also note is it's also revisiting the cost-based uh, optimization framework um, so that it, if, uh, it produces more correct results. So now let's look at um, Presto on Spark implementation at Intuit. Uh, so Intuit's mission is uh, powering prosperity around the world. And to do so, uh, we are transforming into an AI-driven uh, expert platform. So this is Intuit's uh, data landscape. Uh, we have... Um, uh, around 200k tables, uh, we produce petabytes of data, we have produced this data over a period of 30 years, and we serve um, 100, um, customers, 100 million customers. And um, now Superglue, so Superglue is a homegrown tool uh, built that into it that helps users build, manage, and monitor data pipelines. I have been uh, part of the Superglue uh, team since the beginning. Uh, Superglue was built to democratize data for analysts and data scientists. Superglue minimizes time um, spent in developing and debugging data uh, pipelines and maximizes the time spent on uh, building insights and AI ML. So this is Superglue users. We practically serve uh, um, almost 90% or more than 90% of the analyst community at Intuit. 
So the problem statement which was given to us was um, there are many group of analysts um, who are uh, doing exploration on Athena which uses Presto SQL and then they come to uh, Superglue uh, to uh, schedule their Presto SQLs. And Superglue was primarily using Spark SQL as the dialect. And as you all know, the dialect changes are not fun. Um, it, requires, it requires multiple cycles and then the analyst has to manually convert uh, their uh, code from uh, Presto to Spark. Now, this slide um, shows um, the um, uh, journey map for an analyst. Um, as you see, that there are various phases. You, there is an exploration and analyze phase, there is a process phase, and then there's a visualize phase. So um, Presto SQL and Spark SQL are the two major um, dialect switches used within Intuit. So uh, for, for exploration purpose, so if you are using Spark SQL, you basically, because it's the same dialect, you don't have to do conversion. But if you are using Presto SQL, you go through this series of uh, conversion. And as I mentioned that, you know, it's not just a SQL uh, conversion, um, um, you know, which is tedious, but there are also the subtle changes, uh, subtle differences in these dialects that you have to take care of. Now, um, usually, uh, I mean, when you are developers, if you are using a certain dialect, um, you usually tend to develop best practices for that engine or dialect, which may not typically apply for the uh, other dialect. And then um, the query performance, um, those aspects are different for these engines, and there is definitely a lot of learning curve involved, which um, leads to uh, productivity loss. So the ask to us was, um, that um, you provide a performing platform uh, and uh, provide the analyst ask us to provide them with a simple unified experience uh, to explore process and visualize data. So we looked at uh, various options. The first obvious option was um, query translation library. So we looked at um, uh, Codal, um, but it offered a query translation uh, from um, Hive to Presto, but not vice versa. And uh, as you all know that the challenges with uh, query translations, we did not go for that. Uh, then the other option is uh, to try out uh, query virtualization, uh, but as you all know, it's not easy to build a um, you know, query virtualization platform. So we have built something uh, known as low-code, no-code framework at uh, Intuit, which is called as Simplan. Um, there was a talk on Tuesday on it. So it offers an abstraction over uh, run times, uh, uh, extraction over the engines, but it's, um, uh, and uh, at some point in time, uh, we will, um, we are planning to open source. And then the third one is the option was we explore on Athena and you process using Presto, but you all have seen the scalability limitations that we can run with. And then the last one was Presto on Spark, uh, which was a win for us. So this is a high level um, implementation add into it. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, uh, but uh, at a high level, a um, user comes and schedules their uh, jobs uh, on uh, Superglue. They build their pipeline, and um, that's being scheduled. Um, it goes by infrastructure abstraction service. Um, this service offers an abstraction over various run times that we have, uh, Databricks EMR. And uh, we are running on um, Databricks uh, 9.1 version, and we are running on E2 workspace, and there was again a talk uh, yesterday on um, scaling um, into jobs uh, uh, using um, Databricks. So, and the entire Superglue team is here, so if you have any questions about that, um, you can ask us later. So the next uh, four or five slides, um, we're going to talk about uh, the challenges that we ran into. So we took an open source uh, Presto and Spark library and uh, we convert it into a product uh, which is used within Intuit at scale. And um, if you are using Presto on Spark, um, you may relate um, with these challenges, or if you plan to use Presto on Spark in future, um, these may come handy. So the first thing was uh, the Presto on Spark library and Databricks runtime has um, uh, version conflicts, but uh, the Presto team has managed it very well. Um, it has provided class loader isolation, but we still ran into conflicts in Java and IO library. Uh, we have applied a patch, and we plan to contribute it back. Then the other challenge was uh, Presto open source library. You can run only one query at a time, and for us, uh, it required us to you run the entire script. 
Um, so as I had said, the Presto Pro produces two artifacts. It produces a launcher jar and produces a Presto a Spark a dependency package. So we actually um, we replaced the uh, Presto's launcher code with our custom launcher code, which is uh, based on uh, on top of Simplan, and uh, we have the fix there. We'll either uh, contribute back uh, to open source, or um, if we uh, if we decide to open source Simplan later. And then the other challenge that we ran into is uh, cluster auto scaling. So this was very important for us because the analyst does not need to take care of defining the number of nodes or the auto scaling. We take care of it. It's opaque to the users. So if you are using a Databricks, uh, don't use Spark Submit because your jobs are not going to scale. Uh, but use a jar task. Um, it requires access to shared Spark session. And again, this is used in the custom Presto Spark launcher code. Now, Presto on Spark uh, library does not have a DDL support. So uh, we were executing Hive-style DDLs because Athena also does that, but we have contributed back the DDL support. Then the other was the tables just created were not discoverable outside uh, Superglue. We applied a patch uh, to provide public read grants, and as part of the um, DDL support, you can always uh, run grant statements. Then we provided a fix for uh, processing legacy tables, uh, which is created by Hive. Um, now, these two are um, interesting ones. Um, so Presto on Spark Engine uh, was um, not able to identify the uh, broadcast uh, joint correctly. Uh, so I was, I, we were seeing that even if uh, the join is, uh, is eligible for broadcast join, it was always defaulting to hash join. Um, so we applied a workaround fix, and the workaround fix was, uh, so whenever any of these engines, right, Spark, Presto, any of the big data engine, when you have to run compute cost, it looks at certain heuristics, which is, um, say, CPU size, or I.O., or memory cost. Um, and then memory cost was always coming to be zero uh, for some reason for Presto jobs. So the workaround fix was to ignore the memory cost and take the size into account, and Size is a good enough factor to decide whether you want to do a broadcast or a hash join. But a permanent fix has been applied, uh, which takes the custom, um, the source size into account um, if their cost-based optimizer fails. And then the other one, interesting one, was uh, netty out of memory error. So we are using um, Spark's external shuffle service. And um, you can see a memory, and we are, we are seeing memory leak with that. So the recommendation from Databricks was to use uh, Spark 3. So that's the permanent fix. But as a workaround, uh, we increase a Presto query hash partition count that corresponds to SQL shuffle partitions if you're coming from Spark background. You can always throttle the fetch request within a task uh, using uh, Spark config properties. And then the, um, you can always move to a more um, optimized uh, uh, cluster or uh, your instance type. So um, these are the last two set of challenges that uh, we saw. So the first one is if you are using Databricks and if you are leveraging Databricks autoscaling, by default it does aggressive autoscaling. That means that um, even if your um, executor nodes um, or your node has shuffle files, it, it was still killing the um, it was still killing down the nodes, and uh, we were seeing all kinds of errors. So you can apply this property, and um, it controls the downscaling and uh, uh, with after that, we have been seeing everything has been running good. Then the last one here is um, you have um, if uh, one of the asks from analysts was that we want to read from Hive views, and uh, Presto on Spark library does not currently provide support for reading from Hive views. So we looked at um, LinkedIn Scodal that li that query translation library and provides that support. And um, we have tested this, and we also plan to um, contribute it back. So um, the last, um, so the success metrics. Um, so we have we released a Presto on Spark solution last year, and we have now over 2,000 jobs running successfully in, in production. Um, we have improved analyst productivity, and um, we also Preston Spark solution was used to power the tax season for this year. And um, that's the user feedback, and. Uh, that's the last slide. So key takeaways of why, why Preston Spark matters. The first one is 
Um, there is no query translation required. You can scale to large data volumes, uh, leveraging Spark Shuffle capabilities. Uh, you, you can reliably run long-running jobs. You get the fault tolerant out of Spark. You don't have queries intervening with each other. And you um, get elastic compute from Spark. And the last one is um, you enable, um, you get a unified SQL experience between interactive and batch use cases. Thank you. That's my social media handle. If you have any questions, uh, you can um, uh, reach out on Presto Slack channel. All the Presto developers are here, and you can tag me or Adrian. Thank you. I think we are right on time.